If you have your Bibles, if you could take them out, I'm going to uh, get to a couple of scriptures here in just a moment. Uh, Ephesians 5 and Proverbs 31. Ephesians 5 and Proverbs 31 is where I'm going to be in just a few moments. But I wanted just to make you aware uh, of a couple of great things going on here in the church this week and also next week. This upcoming Thursday afternoon and evening is our, our next blood drive, regional blood drive here at Cornerstone Church. All the signups are online, but if you need help with that, please just contact the church office. We'd love to help you with that. Uh, that begins this Thursday at 2 o'clock, I believe runs to 6.30 uh, in the afternoon. The spots are filling up, so if you would like to donate blood, uh, I would say as quickly as you can, maybe after service this afternoon, evening, or tomorrow, if you can just go and sign up. I know it would be a blessing uh, to many. And then this upcoming Friday, uh, we're blessed to have the YWAM ministry that's going to be here doing a biblical uh, drama. Uh, that will start at 7 o'clock here at the church at uh, this Friday. The cost is free uh, to get to it, but it's open to everybody. And so if you're available this Friday evening, we invite you just to come. Uh, maybe even bring a friend with you. I, I believe this would be a great time together. And then the last uh, couple things I want to make mention of is the following weekend, uh, the next Friday, which would be May the 21st. We're having a, a Christian concert right here at the church. We have a few different bands uh, that will be playing. Uh, there is a cost to that evening. The cost is $20 per person, but all of this is a fundraiser for youth camp and various missions projects that our, our church is a part of. Uh, for whatever reason, if that cost is a, a struggle to you, or maybe you just don't have the $20, but you'd like to come and be a part of that, please just contact uh, the church office. We have some tickets that are available to give away. But once again, those would just be a first come, first serve basis. And then lastly, the following day, next, not this upcoming Saturday, but the following Saturday, our church will be participating in another outreach, a, a neighborhood block party. Uh, sponsored through the Dream Center. And so if you'd like to just volunteer your time for a few hours on May the 22nd, if you'll just see Pastor Joseph over here to my right, uh, your left, uh, he's headed out there and we'd love to take a team uh, from Cornerstone Church just to go love on those uh, who need to experience uh, Jesus Christ. So uh, today I want to get kicked back into the series that we've been on entitled Healthy Families. This is now the part three of this is just a little overview. Uh, the first teaching was on the functional family. And within that teaching, we talked about the importance of growth uh, physically, mentally, but most importantly, spiritually. Last week's message was entitled Marriage by God's appointment. And we talked about God's vim, God's vigor, God's vitality within our marriage. And, and today we recognize is Mother's Day. And so I've entitled this morning's message, Mother, a Basic Need of Life. Thank you for one mom. Can I say this? It doesn't matter how old we get, we still need mom. It's joyful to experience the comfort, the love, the nurturing that you can receive, I believe most distinctly from a mom, because that's how God has designed it. I think as we look into this morning's teaching and reflect back over scripture today, I think it's easy to remember that the climax of God's creative activity was the presentation of man and woman. The natural system that God selected to populate the earth, we talked about this a little bit last week, was the union between a husband and a wife. We realize that the father is essential to plant in order for the children to be created, but, but the mother is the basic unit for conceiving, developing, and giving birth to that child. And I think when we begin to talk about moms, it's probably when our hearts become most sentimental or emotional. I remember growing up in school, and many of you, I'm sure, had that same experience. You could probably say anything about anyone, just don't say anything about their mom. It's like it triggered something within somebody's Inner, inner being. I mean, you could almost say anything about me 
about yourself. You could probably say just about anything about our dads. But the moment that you begin to say something about someone's mom, it's like they would just drop the gloves and everything was, let's go. Why? Because moms hold that special place in most all of our hearts. The one who cares, loves, nurtures. The list can go on and on of all the beautiful things that moms do for us. Because of her unique role within the family, can I present to you this morning that I believe that our moms have particular needs within their lives. I think we recognize that moms do a lot within the home. And often it seems as though they take care of everybody else. But I believe moms need to be cared for also. Because mom have needs, particular needs that are represented within their lives. The family and society, I believe, have special needs that only a mother can meet. But this morning, I, I really want to focus in on the needs of mom. And I, I just have two thoughts that I want to give you. But first, let, let's get back to the scripture. Uh, Ephesians chapter 5. Uh, pick up, excuse me, let me go, go to chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6. Pick up with me in the first verse. It reads, Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment, with the promise that it may go well with you and that you may enjoy long life on the earth. So once again, if you have your, your scripture, turn over with me. Don't lose Ephesians 6, but turn over with me to Proverbs chapter 31. Let, let me read for you just a few verses, picking up in the 10th verse. It states, a wife of noble character who can find. She is worth far more than rubies. Her husband has full confidence in her and lacks nothing of value. She brings him good, not harm, all the days of her life. And if we can, skip down to verse 28. I just want to read a couple more verses for you and then focus in on these. Verse 28 states, her children arise and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praises her. Many women do noble things, but you surpass them all. Father, we say thank you for your word. God, as we've looked to your scripture, I just pray over the next few moments that you help us to, to grow in your truth. God, capturing your revelation. God, and I just pray that our mothers would be honored today. God, that we rightfully celebrate them and care for them. Lord, realizing how much they care for each one of us. God, I believe for it to be so. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. I first want to just identify a few of our mother's needs. Can I, can I say this? That I, I believe that the role of a mother, I've never had to play it before, but I, I believe that the role of a mother is not easy to fulfill. There's many factors outside the home that influence their children. So I believe it's necessary for a mother to make certain efforts if she's going to be successful in rearing, or we might would say training her children. It's a big need that's represented within her life to, to do a good job in training her children up. And I, I pray hopefully to train her children up in the ways of the Lord. So let me give you just four of these briefly this morning. Number one, a mother needs to have society on her mind. Some might say that's, that's kind of interesting. Well, let me expound on it for just a moment. I believe a mother must be aware of the evils that her children face, specifically when the children are not under her immediate care. And she must understand society, why? So that she can warn her children against such evils. 
I think if we're honest this morning, church, we, we realize there, there's a lot of evil that's to be experienced in this world. And a mother has that great responsibility to understand those. Why? So once again, she can warn her children against the effects of the evil. Yet I also believe, on the other hand, since children's attitudes are forged by their mother, a mother must also be aware of the good that exists in our worlds. Why? So that she can instill, encourage her children in that which is right. So number one, the first need that I believe, I believe is represented in a, in a mom's life is a need to be aware of our society, what's going on within our society. Number two, a, a mother needs to have a God, needs to have God within her hearts. A mother plagued by guilt of the tarnish of sin, I, I tend to believe will be a ghost in the lives of her children. There, therefore, a mother owes it to her family to have a clear conscience and a soul that's set free by salvation through Jesus Christ. Then, then and only then may she guide her beloved children, I believe, into a genuine life or a genuine faith with Jesus Christ. The most peaceful spot on the earth is a path that's right in the center of God's will. And how peaceful it is for a mom to know that she's living in the center of God's will, but yet training her children to be able to live in the center of God's will. The wise mother desires this reality for herself but also for her family. So number two, a mother needs to have God in her heart. Number three for you, a mother needs to have a husband who is loving her. A husband loving her. I believe a mother needs the true friendship of her husband. They have to work side by side to help make the home a, a nurturing environment for the children. Can I, can I remind us, I, I recognize that it's Mother's Day, but the training of our children don't, that doesn't fall just to the mom. I, I believe the training of the, re, of the children is the responsibility of the mom and also the father. Look back to Ephesians chapter 6. Children, obey your parents in the Lord for this is right. It, it doesn't single out moms. It doesn't single out fathers. In the very first verse, it identifies both children obey your parents in the Lord for this is right honor your father and mother which is the first commandment with a promise why that it may go well with you and that you may enjoy long life on earth so number three once again a mother needs to have a husband a father who is loving her working together to care for the children, to nurture the children. Number four for you, a mother needs to have children under her guidance, her guidance. I just read in Ephesians 6, but once again, we have this great command. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. I sense a basic need of the mother is for her children to love her and to obey her. To love her and to obey her. It's the rebellious child, the disobedient child, that brings undue stress into the life of a mother. I think we recognize this morning, church, that being a mom can be stressful. As children, we don't want to make it more stressful by simply not obeying them, not respecting, not honoring them. And as fathers, we can help reduce the stress in our wives' lives, to reduce the stress in the life of our, our child's mom by helping our children to understand the importance of walking in obedience, the importance of walking in love, the, the importance of respecting mom at all times. 
So once again, number one, a mother needs to have society on her mind. Number two, a mother needs to have God within her heart. Number three, a mother needs to have a husband loving her. And lastly, number four, a mother needs to have children that are under her guidance, but once again, children that are obeying her. The basic need for successful mothers are met by God, by the yielded spirit of the mother, by the loving heart of a husband, and by the obedient mind and actions of her child or children. So once again, number one, we've identified a mother's needs. Number two, I want you to recognize this morning that, a, that simply a mother is needed. A mother is needed. God ordains a basic place for motherhood within the structure of our society. We're not supposed to figure it out without her. She's needed. I think those who have had those experiences of trying to figure out life without a mother understands the difficulty of that. Why? Because mom, I mean, God has designed that we have a mom, but that we also have a dad. As I was going around taking care of things this morning, I had somebody send me, a good friend of mine, send me a, a text saying, Jerry, I just wanted to wish you a happy Mother's Day. And I sat there waiting for the response of the text. And then he responded, just joking with you. Just pray that you encourage mothers to the best of your ability this morning. But as I talked about a little bit last week, in this society, we're getting more and more confused as to what a mother is, a mom is. And I want you to recognize that a mom is still much, much needed in the lives of children today. As I identified, God created them male and female, that the two would come together and, and be one. We talked about this greatly last week in, in, in an appointment, in a marriage appointed by God, the, the importance of a male and a female. Why? Because a child, catch this, a child needs the female, the, a, a child needs the mom just as well as the child needs the dad. But the reality is some of us have gone through that difficult experience where maybe we didn't have a mom or maybe we didn't have a dad. It doesn't remove the, the reality that each one of us yet still need a mom. So moms, I want you to know today that, that you are of utmost importance in a child's life. A child needs you. I believe a child is desperate for your involvement. Doing the things that only you can do within the life of a child. A few things I want to present to you within this that closely relate to what I had demonstrated before. Number one is this. A mother is needed by a distraught society. Motherhood, catch this, mother, motherhood is a symbol of righteousness and concern. Where there is a degrading of this concept, society becomes sickened. When a mother exemplifies biblical standards of holiness, then, then the society becomes healed. In our society, we're seeing the, the degrading of the reality of, of, of who a mom is, of, of what a mom can do, the responsibility of a mom. The byproduct of that is our society is becoming sick. What we're desperate for are moms, mothers, who will exemplify a biblical standard. Because when mothers exemplify a biblical standard, healing comes to the society. Can I talk to moms and dads for just a moment this morning? I want you to realize that as you're growing and training and developing your children, God never calls us to be their friend. God calls us to be their parents. 
Friends aren't those who usually hold us accountable to wrong decisions. Friends are often the ones that are appeasing us in the society that we live in. It's easy and becoming easier to want to appease our children, to want to just go along with them because we think that this will create a peaceful home. I'm not trying to be negative this morning, but that does not create a peaceful home. It creates disruptions. It creates disunity. God has called you as parents to lead your children. To, in what? Specifically to lead them into righteousness, to lead them into holiness. I, I think we should be careful what we do with our children. I, I think we should be careful what we allow ourselves to be entertained by with our children. Why? Because we want to set a standard, a biblical standard within their life, a standard of holiness, a, a standard of righteousness. It's then, it's then when the society becomes healed. It's when mom and dad can do this as one. It's when mom and dad can do this together. It's, it, 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 if you ever find yourself trying to convince the other one, well, well, maybe we can slack off just a little bit. I, I believe that there's a, an unction within inside of us through the Holy Spirit that, that wants to question that thoughts, that wants to question that action, that, that we realize that, that we don't slack off in the biblical standards of God's Word just so that we think we can create a home of peace. We have that tremendous privilege that tremendous responsibility as parents to train our children to do what? According to Ephesians 6, 1, to obey, to obey, to obey. Not just to obey when they think that it's the right thing to do, but to obey because dad and mom said, this is what we're doing. This is what God's word has determined. And I want to give you a little insight in case you haven't figured this out. Your children are not going to like all of your decisions. Anybody recognize that with me this morning? They're not going to like all of your decisions. But you have a responsibility to help them learn the importance of obeying. Why? Catch it. It's a promise that comes when we fulfill the commandments, that it may go well with you and that you may enjoy long life on earth. It's, it's doing wrong that leads to sickness that shortens our life. It's doing good that leads to health that lengthens the life. I don't know about you, but I want my children to live a good life. I want my children to live a long, good life. And I realize, according to God's word, the way that I can do that as a father is teaching them the importance of obedience, not just to me, but teaching them obedience to their mom, my wife. It's there where we have a healthy family, where we have a peaceful, a strengthening, a growing, a maturing family. So a mother is needed within that. A, a mother is needed by a distraught society. Number two, a mother is needed by her children. Children have lofty feelings of pride about their parents. Although we realize that no, no parent is perfect, a mother owes it to herself and to her children to strive to maintain a proper and righteous life. A proper and righteous life. A mother is needed and needed by her children to live that godly example before them. No, number three for you. A mother is needed by her husband. Her husband needs her to assist in the training of their children. Mothers should foster a true spirit of maternal life so as to truly minister to their children and to be a source of strength to her husband. So we realize, number three, that a mother is needed by her husband. Lastly, for you, number four, a mother is needed by the church. The church, the local church has an awesome dependency upon mothers. A mother learns 
here at Biblical Truths and then shares them with her family and then passes them along to her friends. Her time and talent are used in many functions within the congregation, within the local church. Her children then, I believe, will follow within her footsteps. How beautiful when a, a, a mom is recognized that, recognized that she's needed within the church, offers her gifts and abilities within the church, and they're closely behind her is her children serving along with her, encouraging others, loving others. Why? Because that's what mom has modeled before her children. So as I begin to wrap this together for us this morning, please, please capture God has placed the mother in the life of every person. Yet we're not numb and don't recognize there are some circumstances where people haven't had the opportunity to experience a mother's tender concern. I just want to remind you that God is yet still for you. That God is with you. But blessed, blessed is the mother who shares the truth and the life of God with the children that he has placed within her care. We need moms. I believe that our society, churches, need moms who will strive to live to godly principles and a godly example within her home. Demonstrating these daily unto her children. And I say thank you. Thank you to moms that are here. I, I look around and in Cornerstone, like many other churches, are blessed with some wonderful moms. Moms who have been faithful to, to teach their children, to love their children, to nurture their children. Most importantly, in the things of God. Can I say this? Don't give up. It doesn't matter how old your children. It doesn't even matter if they've moved out of the house. You still love and nurture and care and, and encourage your children. I, I'm so thankful when I can call mom and, and, and talk to mom like, like she's standing right here next to me. And to hear her words of encouragement, her words of comforts. To recognize her prayers to receive her biblical insight. No, no matter what age I become, I, I long for those moments to hear what only a mom can provide. When I walk into their house, and mom is always the first one to greet me with a big hug and to give me a kiss on the cheek. And then when I walk out to get that embrace again, and the kiss on the cheek again, and knowing what all of that represents into my life. All that she went through to, to care for me, to help me. So we say thank you. Thank you to moms. And I just pray that, that we honor you well, not just today, but can we literally say every day of our lives, supporting one another, encouraging each other, recognizing that, that moms have needs, but also that moms are needed every day within our lives.